Yo, welcome to Creative Block. We are your hosts, Gene. And V, we interview people in the animation industry about their life, work, and hobbies while we doodle jam. Uh, we asked people on Twitter if they had specific topics they wanted us to discuss, as well as some drawing prompts. And today with us, we have Nicole Rodriguez. Yay. <laughs> it's me. Hi. Hello. Uh, How are you doing? <laughs> Good. Nicole is a very talented artist and a friend oh. and has worked on a bunch of cool stuff. Tell us who you are. Uh, hi, I'm Nicole. I go by Schnickles on things. Schnickles. Schnickles. Uh, <laughs> it's a <laughs> high school nickname I had. Uh, but yeah, so I work on as a storyboard artist and revisionist and stuff. I've worked on Steven Universe the movie and Steven Universe Future. Wow. And also The Owl House and uh central park right now Ooh. yeah it's been great <laughs> that's cool so you've been mostly doing revisions and boards which yes is exciting yeah i'm a big boy <laughs> we're gonna ask you about uh -huh. <laughs> your like your inspiration what kind of motivated you to go into animation like as a kid kind of what when was the moment when you thought oh this is what i want to do or yeah. maybe not as a kid. Maybe it was later. Like, kind of, what was uh, your path? <laughs> uh, I, I mean, I've been drawing since I was like, yeah, like in kindergarten, like very young. So I feel like I feel like I was doomed from the start. <laughs> <laughs> I was I was doomed. Cursed to a fate. Yeah, pretty much. Sorry, I'm looking up the one slur. <laughs> no, that is a cursed uh, prompt. <laughs> I have to do it. <laughs> Godspeed. I don't even know what a one slur is. Oh, you know. <laughs> Nicole, your, your cackle peaked your mic. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It sent you into a different dimension. I'm sorry. I tried to, I tried to lead away. Okay. So, uh, yeah. I, <laughs> oh, it's that guy from the Laura? <laughs> yeah. The Laura. Oh, my gosh. I, I have to put it in there, I guess. Like, I have to see. Yeah, anyway. But, yeah. I mean, I've drawn, I've drawn since I was, you know, very little. And it was just something my parents always encouraged and were fine with. And they were like, yeah, follow your dreams. <laughs> so, <laughs> That's good. Yeah, and then I found anime, and then I found, I, well, I found... <laughs> Get that out of here! Get that shit out of my... Okay, yeah. <laughs> Wowie language. So I'm I'm I, like, I had a panic. Here. I had like a jump scare. <laughs> not, not expecting jump scares. God, the onesler suddenly appeared in front of me. <laughs> yeah. Oh, he has to have the glasses. Okay, hold on. But yeah, so, you know, I, it's the typical thing. I just thought anime was cool. And then I <laughs> I thought Powerpuff, Powerpuff Girls was a big one, actually, too. Oh, okay, that's surprising. So were you more of like a Cartoon Network kid than... Yes. Kid. I was a Cartoon yeah. Network kid. I never like the one thing that went over my head was Disney Channel. Never really I watched a little bit. Yeah, there was some stuff. Yeah, but... like I, I missed that mostly. It was Nick and Cartoon Network. Why? Uh, what is it about the, that was I think it was because I was a little I was a little tomboy. So I liked that there. It was like the I feel mm -hmm. like it was one of the first times I saw girls in a cartoon that I was like, oh, they're cool. <laughs> And they're and they're not like and like they can be sure like feminine and cool and still kick kick ass and everything. I mean, their yeah. original name was Kick Ass Girls. Yeah, uh, Whoop Ass Girls. <laughs> whoop Ass Girls. No. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I think I. Uh, cause, uh, yeah, I love Far Up Girls too. I like it. Definitely feels like a staple in my like upbringing, but I never really acknowledge it as that, which is weird. Yeah, it's. I always forget about it for some reason. I don't know. I don't, I don't know. It's funny because for me, Power Up Girls, I only ever watched it because it was scheduled around Pokemon. I was so oh. into it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that was the only thing I cared about. And especially because in France, like Cartoon Network wasn't entirely translated in, Fr in French. Like half of it was still in English. Oh, I see. So like Cow yeah. and Chicken was definitely in English. And I was like, I don't understand anything Cow about chicken. this cartoon. <laughs> <laughs> oh, one I always forget about. Ed and Nettie was huge for me yeah. too. Oh, that one was so Ed good. and Nettie was like, whoa. Like I, I loved that show so much. Yeah, Ed and Nettie rules. I appreciate it more as I get older too. Yeah, that and Hey Arnold. Mm, okay. I like Hey Arnold was like 
my shit. (laughs) (laughs) I don't know. A lot of stuff was my shit, I guess. But like, yeah. Well, that's what we're here to talk about. Yeah. And then, uh, oh, sorry. Go ahead. No, I was going to say, I kind of want to ask you, like, kind of, so you've always been drawing and you always knew you wanted, like, when did you kind of figure out it was animation rather than like, for example, comics or... Actually, pretty late in the game, actually. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. (laughs) Yeah. So originally... I was doing like illustration. I studied uh, like fine art and illustration stuff. Oh, where did you study? So I I started in high school. I had this mentor uh, named Jeffrey Fisher, who is like a fucking genius. <laughs> uh, I have his signature tattooed on my arm because uh, he passed away, but he was great. And whatchamacallit. <laughs> Sorry, me. I'm looking at this fetal juice. I just noticed. <laughs> she was horrible. I do That's not- a powerful energy. That's a powerful. <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember what fetal juice looks like. <laughs> no, it's, it's, it's yeah, wonderful. You're, you're don't, change it. A, don't change a thing. <laughs> you're, you're nailing that. <laughs> tip. That's a beetle juice. <laughs> He looks, his hair looks like one of the kids from Meet the Robinsons. Yeah. <laughs> Jimmy Neutron ass, knockoff Jimmy ass. Neutron, yeah, I love it. Okay, but... Um, <laughs> Back to so your I story. Thought... <laughs> hey, you, you... Anyway, you had a mentor that meant a lot to you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, his name is Jeff K. Fisher, and he was, you know, crazy talented illustrator. He had these classes on Long Island that are still going under different management, mm. but obviously... But yeah, like it it changed my life. And like he, as much as I was always drawing, like he was kind of like what made it solidified that I wanted to do it as like a career, because uh, I learned a freaking lot. <laughs> Basically, we drew, we did every once a week for like seven or eight hours. We did yeah. figure drawing for like years. Wow. Oh, that's okay. great. Yeah, and it was like we took breaks, obviously, and like. We had a lunch break and like little breaks here and there, but it was like, you know, all these different exercises and like, he just had such a completely different way of like thinking about art and thinking about drawing that was really inspiring. And, uh, you know, he was taught by like some pretty famous golden age illustrators himself. So it was like, it was coming from a very like legit place also, Mm -hmm. which was cool. Um, But yeah, so for a while I wanted to do illustration. I went to art school, not a great one. (laughs) Oh, <laughs> I, Roast went to the fa- Let's hear I went it. to the I, I went to the Fashion Institute of Technology. I'm not Boom. sure about it. I don't like that place. It's a bad school. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I'm sorry. It just like except for for some reason, toy toy design. Very good toy design department. Notoriously good. Yeah, I feel like every school has like one thing that they somehow. Yeah, it's weird. For, really hard to get into, and their end of the year projects were always the best. <laughs> yeah, that's such a weird specific thing I never really think about. I didn't even know that that was something you could like school. Me either. For what? Like I didn't know. I was like, I, I, like that's how I learned that it was a thing. I was like, oh, yeah, because they made like vinyl toys and then little illustrated oh, books to go with whoa. it. Whoa! Yeah, no, they're they're. That department was sick, and their floor looked cool too. It wow. didn't look like a jail. Oh, by the way, that school looks like a literal jail. <laughs> If you look it up but yeah so i went there for two years and i was like fuck this and i left mm-hmm. and then i kind of just drifted for a little bit actually like I, you know i lived in manhattan for a while oh because um what state was that school in it was it's in manhattan it's okay. in new york okay, okay okay yeah like i lived in manhattan to going to school and then just oh because living there um where are you originally from like uh where you oh i'm from i'm from long island cool east coast which is the little island the little dingling on the new york (laughs) (laughs) the little dingling but the little dangling but god this one sir beetlejuice anyway yeah (laughs) um but (laughs) I'm like, uh, yeah, so I'm from Long Island. For anyone who doesn't know, uh, that's where the Jersey Shore people are actually from. Oh, interesting. If that's what, if you ever want to know what Long Island's like, that's it. Oh, okay. <laughs> yep, mostly. There's like a pocket of cool people there, like like with most places. Sure. Yeah, so I lived in Manhattan for a while, and then I started working for Studio Yada as a cleanup animator and that's kind of how it was in the it was in the drifting years like when I was sort of just I didn't not in school looking for looking for a regular job and an animation job that I was like okay I want to do animation 
because I got to know a lot of people on Twitter, like friends Ooh. and like. I mean, we, I think we first uh, started talking on Twitter. Yeah. 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 So like, you know, and it was sort of like something I always, I always liked, but always like didn't, it's just weird. Like you don't, sometimes it's the obvious answer is in front of you and you just don't sure. realize it. <laughs> Because yeah. I, I really was kind of like, all I knew is I wanted to draw. And for a while, I actually wanted to do uh, games. That was the original trajectory. I wanted to do like design and games and stuff. I was a big uh, double fine person. <laughs> oh. I still am. But yeah. So which one is your favorite double fine game? Oh, Psychonauts. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Psychonauts is just like one of the most inspired fucking games I've ever played. It's so interesting. It's a good one. So yeah, what was your first gig? First animation. First animation gig technically uh, was Yada doing cleanup animation for a short called Oh my God, what was it called? Was it the? It had a, it had a bunch of ghosts in it. It was by this guy Michael Barity. Okay, I don't know that one. Commissioned it to us. It was, it's a, it's a short, it's on YouTube. I'm trying to remember the name of it. He was trying to make it get like pitch it around and right. we were tasked with, you know, uh, animating it and cleaning it up and all that. Right. Well, it must be, must be an older one. Cause yeah, I don't know. Yeah. It was, it was, it was, the, that was technically the first thing I ever did. And okay. the first thing I ever tested for was actually super jail. Oh yeah. Oh wow. Yeah. I tested to be a cleanup animator on that. Cause that's what I was doing at Yada. So it was like, yeah. Kind of like what year was this kind of? Oh boy. I was like, I was like 19 or 20. What year is that? <laughs> it used to be made in New York, right? Yes. Yeah, there's, there's a Titmouse studio in New York. So I, that's why I was going for it, because I was in New York at the time. Sure, sure. Yeah, so that's, uh, that's what I, my first like industry, industry gig outside of freelance was uh, Steven Universe the movie as cool. a revisionist. Yeah, yeah. Which was wild. <laughs> Oh yeah. As a as a fan of the series, it was wild. Yeah, that's probably that's a that's a that's a big place to start. I feel. I mean, I mean, we're yeah. No, it's true. I I sometimes I still I like forget. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, oh shit. Yeah. Because yeah, like well, I've been friends with you through all of that, and like that was. I remember it, you were kind of having a hard time finding a, a job for a while because it's hard. Yeah, it is hard. Yeah, super. Uh, hard. And then it's like thrown into your favorite show. <laughs> How long would you say was the period of time when you got out of school and you f you found your first gig, kind of like yeah. years or, or months? Like, how long was that? So it was when I got out of school, I stayed in Manhattan for a good handful of years. I want to say like three or four years, like up until, or hmm, more, yeah, more like, th yeah, three years, I, I think, if I'm remembering right. Cause and I actually I worked <laughs> I worked at the Nintendo World store for a year and a half. <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> which actually wasn't that bad. It was cool. I that's working at the Nintendo World store. This is a tangent story, which I'll get into later. That's fine. But uh, working at the Nintendo World store is how I met Justin Roiland. <laughs> oh wow. <laughs> like that's a it's a stupid story. I'll whatever. But yeah. So but after that, like. So it was three years in Manhattan and then I moved to LA and it took about two years from there. So I'm going to say like five years or so uh -huh. from school, but I only went to school for two years also. So I don't know, uh -huh. but yeah, so that's, that's what, uh, that's my timeline. <laughs> it took a good while. I, I really like to hear about those years. Actually. I think like for me, it's like really interesting because I think a lot of, um, like for a lot of artists, it's like the most daunting period of time. It's like you get out of school and you're like, yeah. for sure. I don't blame them. Like, you, you know, like, it's like, oh, well, like what now? You know, like I, yeah. yeah, I remember myself too. Like when I got out of school and I was just like, okay, like I got to make this work. I, this is the moment, you know? And you're like, yeah, yeah, totally. I got to prove to everyone I can do this. <laughs> yeah, no, for sure. To a degree, I feel like everyone goes through that when they're out of college. So it's like, oh, for sure. Yeah. It's a universal enough thing, but yeah, there's definitely an added layer to it with, with uh, art. Cause it's just, Cause everyone's like, it's the, the cards are stacked against you a bit. Yeah. People kind of don't look at it as a real trajectory. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Even these days. It's like, not like getting a, a job in like business or something. It's like, you'll, f you'll find a place for that business major, but like there might not be a place yeah. with, with uh, art degrees. A two year illustration degree is pretty much just 
toilet paper it's not yeah <laughs> uh, <laughs> sorry it's just true it's like because you don't need a degree to get a job in art either no you don't well you don't if you're american oh yeah i should clarify yeah if, if you're if you're yeah. like studying abroad you do need a degree for the visa yes but yeah Really? Yeah. Yeah. In France, do they actually like pay attention to that? No, it, I mean, if you want to work in America, if if you if you yeah. just want to work oh, in in the in if you're French and want to work in a French animation industry, that you you don't need a degree. But if eventually you want to move to LA and you're from anybody uh, anywhere else in the world, then yeah. you do need a, a degree. Yeah, 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 for a visa. Yeah, interesting. I've heard that too. Yeah, yeah. it's something that like I hope becomes a little more commonplace. The, the like the understanding at least within America that like you don't need to go to art school if you feel like you already know what you want yeah because then you just end up you, need, you just need the drive you just need the drive and the connections and like now more yeah. than ever you oh yeah can do any of it like it's <laughs> yep. there's nothing stopping you from landing I mean how many people do we know that got these jobs with no help from their college whatsoever I think yes practically everyone I know my college literally I, one time I went to the I went to their offices to be like can I get like an internship and they're like no what happened to me that's what happened to me <laughs> they're like no, good luck it's at yeah. least an illustration they're like they didn't give a shit they were like all right I think I talk about it in my episode, but yeah, it's like the, yeah. but you know what? I think that like, yeah, I think if you have the drive to do it, uh, you'll do it. Yeah, I think so. Like most of, I, I, you can, you know, answer for yourself, I guess, but <laughs> that's the wrong, you can, you can talk about it yourself, but like, I feel like all the personal work I did on top of what I was doing at school is what actually helped me land my jobs. Whereas oh yeah. School projects yes. were do, meant nothing and still mean nothing. But yeah, you, uh, do you feel like you relate to that? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Literally nothing I made in school was anything I was proud of. I wish I could just like, like, I'm glad I never posted much stuff from school because it's garbage. <laughs> yeah. I have so many school stories that are such garbo. I mean, you can see, I cannot exaggerate enough. Talk about any of them. Yeah. So, okay. Yeah, sure. I <laughs> All right. <laughs> Well, I've talked about it before a little bit, but like, so, okay, a lot of the teachers at my school in, in the Fashion to Technology were people that didn't want to teach and had some sort of chip on their shoulder. In my uh, mentor, like the mentor class that I took on Long Island, the figure drawing thing, we were always encouraged to critique and ask questions and like, you know, do shit, learn. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. And it wasn't seen as an attack to be like, oh, what is, what do you mean? Or like, what's this? Like, yeah. I was used, that's what I was used to. That was the environment I was used to. So fast forward to school and I was, I was always the only one that would ever like do critique of certain, like, or, you know, like even when they told us to do it, like it wasn't on, I wasn't being an asshole. Like I, like, you know, I would, sure. I would try to critique the way that they were asking. And then also, I would ask a lot of questions to the teachers and I think that probably garnered me a, a reputation of being a smart ass or some shit because I got yelled at more than once. <laughs> wow. Yeah, like one teacher in particular, I won't name him, but because I remember his name. <laughs> but <laughs> but um I was in his figure drawing class and I would always ask him questions because I thought I kind of thought he was I'll be honest, I did kind of think he was full of shit and like a lot of the stuff he was saying was pretty dated. And, you know, it was stuff I already learned. And I, but I was never trying to be an asshole. I would never, I was always very respectful. And so I guess I must have just straw breaking the camel's back or something. Because one time I like took a little longer to get up from drawing. Like, because he was like, I'm going to do a little drawing demo of what a continuous line drawing is. And I was like, dog, I know it. Like, it's in the name. I know it. Yeah, I, I know what that is in my head and like so I took a little bit longer just to put my stuff away and everyone else was standing up and behind him and I I just took a little bit longer and not on purpose and he, I suddenly hear from behind me like yelling like if you don't want to be in this class you can get out and I was like oh. <laughs> I was like oh, wow. me like I literally double to I was like me <laughs> like like I was like what <laughs> 
and and he literally like like in high school sent me to the principal you know what? like the, the head of illustration oh my god who was this like laid back dude and i and i was like hey so i got sent here and i honestly truly do not know what i did <laughs> and he was like all right well you seem like you know, you haven't had a problem before and you seem pretty earnest. So just go back and apologize and it's fine. And I was like, oh, God damn it. Uh, <laughs> yeah, apologize for what? Yeah, it was humiliating, dude. So I had to go in and like I had to, I stall in the hallway for so long because I was like, I don't want to apologize to this jackass. Yeah. But what I ended up doing was I knocked on the door. He came out and his, he had like this indignant arms crossed, like mad at me face on too. Oh, poor baby. I know. And like, and I was like, hey, sorry, you know, I, I, I really didn't mean anything by, you know, whatever you were mad at. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like, I don't remember exactly what I said, but, you know, he was like, all right, fine. I was like, cool. And he even, oh yeah, I forgot. He even said, like when he yelled at me, he even said stuff like, oh, you think you know everything, wait till you have to like pay for a family and like all this stuff. And I was like, oh. what's going on? Oh. Like, I was like, what are you talking about? <laughs> Yeah. Like, I was so confused. That guy had baggage that he was projecting. I know. That's what I'm saying. That is insane. <laughs> That's so crazy. I genuinely, I promise you, I was not an, I was not like a, an asshole. Like, I don't have the ability to be an asshole. Like I don't that, know about you know? that. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Wow. But no, I, I believe at it. At least at the time. I don't know. Sure. No, I had, um, yeah, I had professors that it's like taught everything the wrong way and i i felt mm -hmm. like pretty objectively and i felt bad for the students who yeah came to school to learn and trusted that the professors had their best interests at heart and like yeah were, were up to date on software and they were so far behind the times that i was like oh this is like yeah. putting just like a shackle on these young on these poor young kids that are like trying to learn i know it's like well you're handicapped now like you have a handicap in your <laughs> career because yeah. you have been taught the wrong way and so you have to unpack that yeah we had a kid who would constantly plagiarize alphonse muka stuff <laughs> well, there's always class. one of those yeah yeah and i was just like all right no one's gonna all right <laughs> So um, what were you working on? Did you have anything that you were working on during college? Because I, you had a webcomic that you did for a little while. Yeah, that was short lived. I like, I in college, honestly, I was mostly just doing schoolwork and trying to learn how to draw digitally. So I was, I came from only doing traditional, which it's interesting because now I feel more comfortable doing digital than I do traditional when it used to be the opposite. Sure. But I think that happens to a lot of people. Yeah. And yeah, I was honestly just pretty much just doing schoolwork. And then for a little bit, there was also another webcomic that I tried to start with some friends in college, but like, like it was me and this other friend of mine, uh, Max, who were the artists. And then whatchamacallit, uh, we had a friend who was writing it, but as much as like, he was, a, he was a good dude, but he just would not, <laughs> we were always waiting on him to like send us writing, but he just kind of never did. Sure, sure. Been so nice. it just, it fell apart pretty fast. I, like we did a bunch of art for it and everything. I even drew like a couple pages, but like, yeah, just, we realized pretty quickly that like, uh, it wasn't going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But, um, yeah. Yeah. And I, I you know, it, stuff like that happens. But yeah, in, in school, I kind of, I don't know, I, I mostly just did figure drawing and like my schoolwork. That was the majority of it. Anyway, I didn't start working on like personal stuff until also kind of late, uh -huh. even like recently. I don't know. Like I draw drawings, but never big projects really. Can you talk about the comic project you've been working on? Or is oh yeah, a, uh, yeah, in... yeah. So okay. um, yeah, so right now I'm still working on it. Uh, I started it maybe like, I think it's in three years, but I'm working on this comic for Oni Press with some good friends of mine, Aaron and Eugene. They're very, very talented writers and very good people. We got randomly matched up because I was desperate for a job and I had a contact only press. So I was like, hey, I need money. <laughs> Do you have anything, like any jobs or anything? And she was like, yeah, these writers are looking for an artist. And I was like, cool. And luckily they liked my stuff. And, uh, you know, I really liked their idea. And so we got matched up and then it just turned out that we got along really well um yeah that's cool yeah and uh it's called pizza run it was announced forever ago 
but like, you know, just that, like that it exists and that it's being made. <laughs> so, okay. Yeah. So that's not, no, a- no, it's not secret or anything, but um, it's great. It's uh, it's basically about this uh, town called McGarver, which is like uh, this town where a lot of crazy supernatural shit happens. And it's all kind of like, there's a lot of double meanings and like uh, metaphors for certain things within the, the, uh, the comic where this girl Kirsten, who's a pizza delivery girl, she, they a new girl moves in with her family, and it's it takes place over one night, and it's them going through all these crazy situations and trials and tribulations, and you know, learning about this town through the lens of the new girl, and they fall in love, and it's great. <laughs> um wow yeah and it's it's uh yeah there's a lot of i'm really excited about it because i love like small town supernatural shit so i was i'm it's something i'm really excited for people to see and i really hope we can get it out sooner than later i hope so too me too <laughs> um, yeah that sounds super cool yeah i'm excited to see it uh let's take it back a little bit uh, yeah so i feel like i went on a tangent and a tangent. no no tangents are fine uh i'm just curious to uh hear you talk more about like what kind of stuff do you find uh the most inspiring and like what are your like pillars of inspiration sort of yeah um i mean you, you know this flcl is a big one i always think of the, that that's the right answer <laughs> <laughs> that's, uh-huh. that's that's a big one for sure like that show was like that was uh monumental for me yeah it just like it made me see how fucking cool animation is (laughs) like i i don't know and just like even if even though when i watched the first time i watched it you know when i was younger i didn't entirely understand it like it leaves a feeling you know like it 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 gives it's like an impact and everything about it yeah that was that was a huge one and yeah like uh yeah, like I said, a lot of Cartoon Network shows. Mm-hmm. A lot of, originally, a lot of illustrators. I was going to say, your your work has, like, an illustrative quality to it that I, a lot of artists don't. Yeah. And it's it's just different. And I was wondering, yeah, there ha- it seems like there must be a pretty big influence. Yeah, I can, somewhere. no, I can talk about it more. I actually, I haven't talked about this in forever. <laughs> uh, well, let us hear. Yeah, yeah, so, um, yeah. So, yeah, I come from an illustrated background. So a lot of my stuff... Uh, learning actually learning how to draw cartoons from an illustration background is kind of tough because you you know if you learn from a figure drawing basis sometimes uh, learning to simplify I mean depending on who you are but learning to simplify can be tough and uh, learning to like what to prioritize which is way different for cartoons than for like illustrative stuff is uh, different but yeah so one of my big illustrative in- influences is uh, N.C. Wyeth who uh, is uh, the dad of Andrew Wyeth, Mm -hmm. who's also another illustrator that is famous. (laughs) Um, And uh, he did a lot of like children's book paintings and illustrations and stuff. And he's like wild talent. Like his color sense is something I still try to emulate sometimes and his like the quality of his stuff. But yeah, so because I mentioned earlier that the way that my teacher taught was a lot different than what I ever see anymore. Like breaking it down into like, more nitty gritty. Basically, one of the big things that he would always say is that, you know, he wouldn't, he wouldn't teach us how to draw, he would teach us how to see, which is like, sounds very profound. (laughs) But, (laughs) but it's pretty simple. It's just like, you know, it's, it's teaching you how to teach yourself, I suppose. Mm -hmm. The way that he broke it down was a lot of like drawing from the inside out, and, you know, draw the entire figure at the same time. A lot of like these mantras and these lessons that at first you're like, what the fuck does that mean? But then the more you go, you're like, oh, (laughs) and you sort of, he doesn't spoon, he didn't like spoon feed us. He sort of like tried to show, not tell and have us learn on our own because he knew that would be more impactful. Just like suggested uh, sort of things. Yeah. It's like, it taught you speed. It taught you like construction, you know, Mm -hmm. it taught a lot of things to like break down shapes that fast and to break it down all at the same time and like because a lot of times we were like oh what do you start with and and you kind of have to it's like you kind of have to take it all in at once (laughs) 
<laughs> at least at least in his yeah. like classes and stuff but yeah. yeah well that's an interesting take on it yeah yeah so that was that was like some of the stuff that he would teach us and then like there's some there's some exercises that i still don't understand to this day <laughs> oh yeah but he knew what he was talking about but i was like i don't fucking know what this is man uh like what can you have an example <laughs> oh god there was one where here i'll show you that it's like there's one where he'd have us draw let me see if i remember he'd have oh god oh okay there we go he'd have us draw a box and then another box and then i think it was like doing like something like this right Mm -hmm. and he was like draw the draw the figure but every time you hit a line change direction and i was like okay okay but no matter what almost every time he's like nope (laughs) you don't understand and i was like fuck <laughs> hmm? and like because it, it taught something that he would always talk about and I, I, tr- I trust that he knew what he was saying but it was like one of the most frustrating like m- most of the class yeah, i don't get it most of the class didn't understand it but if i were to show you his stuff you're like oh yeah i'll, I'll listen to that guy <laughs> like i don't doubt it yeah it was it was, it was a Is it the thing about um tensions it was it like an exact exercise no it was like learning how to wrap form i think and learning how to Uh, it was like this yeah it was something like that i don't know it was interesting that's (laughs) it's an it's a weird that was one of his weirder ones but other ones were like you know uh we called it uh 10 pounds of bologna in a five pound bag so like (laughs) so you you can pretty much guess what that he'd always and it's so funny he, he was like such a storyteller like he he always like ha- had this, he has this long winded story about a, a man walking into a butcher shop and he's like, I want 10 pounds of bologna. And the guy is like, we only have five pound bags or whatever. Like he'd just go on a rant every time. And, like, mm-hmm. <laughs> and it's basically mm-hmm. taking the figure and stuffing it in a bag and making it work. And it's like learning about mass and stuff. But like, yeah, so that's, that's where I came from. That's why I like learning about like drawing cartoons like I had the I had the basics down in drawing, but like learning yeah. about how to prioritize different things was something to learn. It took me a couple of years. Well, it's like it's a totally different angle. Yeah. I mean, I th- I think at the end of the day, it's probably made your work stronger for it, and it like I hope so. I think. Oh, I mean, it has <laughs> just from an outside. Yeah. Mm-hmm. No, I think so too. I, I just yeah. I hope I hope I hope that's apparent. <laughs> Yeah, it is. I think that like you have a very different approach to it that um, because you're yeah, because you have that extra like tool in your toolbox Mm -hmm. that it like it changes the way that you approach things, it seems. Yeah, for sure. Beyond just like style. Yeah. Oh, gosh. Style. 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 Can I talk about style? Yeah. Let's talk about style. Yeah. I I have a very like I have an opinion on the word style and the meaning of style hot take time (laughs) i don't know if it's a hot take i like it's it's more like so because you know you guys probably get this question too like how do you develop a style and like all that and like like how do you know what your style is and number one i just want to say your style is just you you draw that's your style that's it yeah you have it whether you like it or not (laughs) like and also i want to say i've always had this belief that you as a person like it depends right I always use Tim Burton as an example. Like that guy, he has a style clearly like, and it's something that he sticks to throughout most of his stuff. But I have a general, at least for me personally, I always was hoping that like as a person to not necessarily have a style, like I think people should always be willing to learn and like change it up and like kind of evolve. Yeah. But a project can have a style because it needs to because it needs art direction. Yeah. Oh, yeah. hundred percent. You know what I mean? Like consistency. Yeah. yeah. So I always think like I totally understand the question. Like I think people are worried about having an appealing way that they draw and like they w- they just don't even know how to wrap their heads around something at first. But I think that it's a it's one of those things where it's like if you keep drawing, it'll just appear <laughs> like whether you like it or not. Oh, yeah. hundred percent. That's, that's my, that's my, it's not a hot take, is it? <laughs> it's just literally, like, probably. Oh, oh people, man. But, yeah. I was hoping for, I was hoping for some controversy. Yeah, that was another, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think we talked about it with, uh, in an earlier episode, and um, there's something like, it's like style is everything you don't know how to draw. Yes, yeah. <laughs> and it's like, no, that's. You're, you're finding shortcuts. That's real shit, it, so. yeah. If anything, like, again, I don't think it's bad, like, again, using Tim Burton as an example it's not bad to have a, like a no, style that no, you stick no, to and even him like that evolves yeah. over time too 
inevitably. Yeah. I just didn't want to draw a cow. And so I drew a weird little blob, <laughs> you know, and like, yeah, but that's whatever. Yeah. Somebody would be like, wow, that's your style. That's like, well, I just don't know how to draw a cow. <laughs> <laughs> but, but it's a cow. I found a solution. But it's a cow. It's a cow. Like, that's the thing. Like, that's yeah. the prioritize. That's like, just, I, so I came from like, admittedly, I used to be a lot more snooty about art. I think a lot of, mm. I think a lot of people start that way, especially when they're younger. They're like, you think, you know, but I've definitely learned like the value of almost every type of approach to drawing, you know, like, I think that it's all yeah. valid. And I think that everyone just has to get there the way that they get there. I don't know. Sure. No, I, yeah, I, I, I think it. so. I don't know. <laughs> so you have your illustration background and that definitely like informed mm -hmm. how you approach things. Um, are there any like weird sort of uh, influences <laughs> that people wouldn't guess mm -hmm. or um, that you think has sort of, you know, affected you or how you, the kind of stories you want to tell or anything like mm -hmm. books or video games or just even stuff outside of that realm? Mm -hmm. I gotta think about that, huh? That people wouldn't expect. Well, I would I'll say this, knowing you, uh, musicals are a big part yes. of- Oh yeah. Of you. Yeah. yeah. I've made that more apparent recently. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, you put out your whole ass with, yeah. as far as musicals Woo! go, but- Love it. But um, <laughs> I'm like simultaneously trying to draw Frollo while I'm- <laughs> uh, It's hard. Yeah. Uh, let me see. Yeah. I mean, musicals are a big one, man. Musicals and music videos, I should say. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, yeah. I flippin' love music videos. I freaking, Drop some I phase. freaking, <laughs> I, I, I fudgin' love them, man. Like, <laughs> this is, a, this is a G-rated podcast. Thank you for yeah. that. <laughs> <laughs> I like, Gorillas is a big, I mean. Oh, sure. Yeah, that's, that's a huge, that was a huge one too. Cause that was like, that's like the ultimate marriage of animation and music. Like that's, I think yeah. every, I, every, everything in an ideal world for me, everything I work on would have like a music element to it. And I think that, yeah, like there's, okay. So there's one, there's one music video besides all the gorillas music videos. There's one music video for uh, the song Delta by CTC that like, mm -hmm. oh, I, I've watched it so many times. Like it's, if anyone wants to look it up, go for it. Cause it's fucking beautiful. I think I remember, yeah, I remember just talking Yeah, about. and like stuff like that, like just animated music videos are some of my favorite shit. I've always wanted to kind of work on stuff like that at some point in my life. It's kind of why I'm doing the animatics I've been doing recently. It's a, you know, it's mm -hmm. a part of it obviously, but like, yeah, I think music videos and musicals are, awesome because it just ma the marriage of visual and music is literally the most obvious and great thing ever <laughs> that's well, I agree. you know i i think it's just like it's a no-brainer so like yeah yeah i think that's yeah yeah i wish more bands would t i mean yeah it's hard because uh doing any kind like it basically to make rad videos you either need to have a strong vision a, like a you know yeah an art an art direction vision as a musician or hire somebody that does and so yeah it's tough but I do wish more musical artists would yeah just like put more into their videos instead of it just being them in a white yeah <laughs> yeah yeah well also the thing is that like making music videos is pretty expensive yeah that's the other thing it if you is. don't if you're not an artist or you don't know someone that's willing to like do you a solid <laughs> you know like well i i don't know i i think that's if it's a if it's an artist with a budget and a label behind them then like that's yeah that's different i, I don't think it's any i think it's cheaper to do an animated video than to have a big yeah production, you're probably right you know, <laughs> yeah but then like they would hire a studio right like they wouldn't hire just like yes. i mean okay you guys i have to tell you something i really like <laughs> Lil yachty okay that's fine <laughs> I and know. he has like this. <laughs> I have no opinion. He has like. <laughs> uh, I really like his music, especially because he's got a great music video for I Spy, mm -hmm. and I think they hired just like this one artist to do the whole music video, 
I, I mean, mm-hmm. but that's cool. Uh, like he's a big name hired just like an indie artist. But I feel like most of the time, big name artists are like with the, with the whole like shenanigans of producers and like those are like big budget. Like the artist at this point is not just an artist; it's like yeah. basically a studio just themselves, right? Yeah. So they're not just gonna hire like a I don't know a rando off the internet, I guess. Or you know, yeah. Well. Yeah, I mean, it's probably going to be a studio, but I don't know. I mean, I, <laughs> it's, it's, uh, there's enough talent out there now that you could just glance at Twitter and, uh, you know, look at, look around the animation circles and find somebody yeah. who can make some cool yeah. stuff. There's so many talented flipping artists. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why, you, I don't know why you keep censoring I just yourself. I think it's funny. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That I agree with. But uh, yeah, no, there is. There's just a lot of potential to farm. I, I just. Oh yeah. I agree. I agree with you. Yeah. I wish more. Um, I think it's a nice meld of music, like music and animation, and just yeah, dang. cool oh. videos. And I, I wish more more artists would do it. Me too. I always look forward to the like because gorillas. I, God, I'm so happy that they're like just. I feel like they're always almost always going to be doing stuff, <laughs> which makes yeah. me happy. at this point. Yeah, yeah. Like they're old enough that if they wanted to stop, they would have already. So like, yeah. I think Damon Albarn um, straight up tried all these other projects. None of them took off. So <laughs> like, yeah, fuck it. <laughs> I gotta stick with this one. He's oh, like, well, I th- but like, I get it. Yeah, I get yeah. it in every way yeah. because it's like he yeah. he tried other things this not only do people like it Mm -hmm. and it's you know world famous and super successful but it also seems like it just lets him do whatever he wants all like anyway oh yeah they can do whatever yeah they've crossed that line and (laughs) so it's like why not stick with that why did he even bother with like good the bad and the queen and shit but i guess i don't know i feel like you reach a point like i feel like with something like that when you get something that famous there i wouldn't doubt that after a while maybe you'd want to step away you know get a little overwhelmed or like try something different yeah it's like a reset it's, yeah. a, it's a specific group of people that you're collaborating yeah. with and so it like has a different vibe I, I, I do get it yeah. yeah is there anything else you wanted to talk about as far as musicals like is that yeah. effective? Uh, i mean i could talk about the obvious for anyone that doesn't know i'm really into blg the musical <laughs> no <laughs> <laughs> these four uh, prompts are telling <laughs> Um, yeah, I, I, I'm actually, so, cause, okay, actually, okay, I can, I can make this into a real conversation about something else that could branch off. Like, okay, so. Okay, good, please, no, bring it back. <laughs> so. Bring it back from Beetlejuice hell. So, this is me advocating for people to draw the things they like and not be afraid to just draw the things they like. Because mm. yeah, yeah, yeah. this year has not been great for me in terms of, I mean, for everybody you know yeah like i've had my ups i had my downs i had a bit of a bad down at the beginning of the year yeah sure what i ended up doing was that you know i i kind of had my like spark reignited by this musical uh because i really liked it and i decided Mm -hmm. i was gonna do you know an animatic for one of the songs because it was something i always wanted to do and i was trying to prove something to myself so i did it it was great and it got me my job that i have now so i just like, I, li- I didn't have to yeah. test. I didn't have to do anything. They literally were like, you start now if you want. And I'm like, cool. And, you know, it's never happened to me before. So I, and it's a great job and I love doing it. But yeah, so I just, I feel like I just want to advocate for people, like draw the things that you have fun drawing because then that's what people are going to look for you to do. <laughs> you know, yeah, it's, it's kind of, it seems, maybe it seems obvious, but like, I think sometimes people think that like doing fan arts stupid or like i don't know if that's a stigma no, that still yeah. happens but i think it is in probably in certain circles yeah, but, but it's um, not it's not dumb you do draw the things you it's like not why the fuck would you draw not the things you like <laughs> i don't know like mix it up but like you know don't be afraid to draw the stuff you like i think is a good thing yeah yeah well i think you know passion always comes yes. through and um that's that's important. And if you're trying to get noticed, if you're trying to uh, make a name for yourself or whatever, then it's like, what better way than to yeah. do something with passion behind Oh, yeah, it. totally. That's, yeah, that's my Nicole tip of the day. <laughs> hot tip. <laughs> I don't know. Nicole, hot tip. Cool. <laughs> Big text appears. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hot tip. <laughs> yeah, I agree. I think it's, yeah. I think, it, I mean, 
Uh, in my case, I <laughs> wanted to do a comic, but I didn't want to do mm -hmm. uh, a comic of just stills. Yeah. Because I don't feel like yeah. that shows off my like my full potential. My full potential. Yeah, because you're uh, you're good animator. Yeah, I animated for years, and so it, and I just didn't want to deal with sound design and all those <laughs> other things. And yeah. so like, I did an animated comic. Yeah. And I still that's like I feel. Like I was that's a big what fan I'm, of it before we knew each other. I've told you this. You. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> uh, but yeah, why not? <laughs> Compliments to me aside. Yeah. This is a really bad Gideon Graves. Fuck this. I'm, I'm not loving this solo, <laughs> but I'm rolling with it. <laughs> Are you kidding me? That's like on model. Yeah, I can't believe you're just like drawing this from your brain. I <laughs> I thought you had a picture that was like that. I thought you had the model sheet to reference. <laughs> yeah, you just have that ready he's to go. He's just, um, I mean, he's not, but you know. <laughs> no. He's yeah. not, he's he sucks, but he's a good villain. <laughs> yeah. So uh, is there any other? I can, I was actually thinking maybe of going back into the career <laughs> section of the interview. Go for it. Because I kind of want to know, <laughs> so when on the timeline you got out of school and then the first kind of like industry gig that you got was the Yoda gig and yes. kind of like how long did you work with them and how long oh, yeah. after you worked with them did you get your industry uh stage? that was steven yeah the steven universe gig yeah i could talk about it more oh yeah uh let's see so i i got yada pretty soon after school because i just happened to know jake <laughs> who's the head of yada how did you guys meet uh through through my ex-boyfriend they they knew each other and he knew i was looking for a job and he was like hey give nicole a shot and i was like yeah so i did a test for them and he was like yeah you got it i was like cool <laughs> awesome so, yeah, yeah. yeah so i mean cleanup animation is pretty straightforward but you know it it taught me the beginnings of like how this stuff even works because i had no idea. Oh, i came yeah. from the same place of like i don't know how this I don't know how the pipe, what the pipeline is. I don't know, like, how this stuff gets made or, like, because, you know, I, no one tells you. You got to figure it out. <laughs> I mean, unless exactly, you go to yeah. animation school, I guess. But, yeah. <laughs> I, don't but, like, I don't even know if they teach you that. I don't know. But I, yeah, so I got it through, uh, you know, knowing Jake, but I did have to test for it still. So that wasn't completely handed to me. But, yeah. Sure. Uh, so, uh, you know, I had that job for years. I mean, so did um, my roommates. We all had worked at Yada uh, for a long time, like a good handful of years, maybe four years, maybe a little more. Yes. And then uh, and we were all testing for other sh things to get a more, you know, like a little bit more stable, consistent stuff, right. have health care, all that crap. <laughs> that kind of shit. <laughs> that kind of shit. Because uh, we hated where we lived. And, you know, we even, even with the very small amount of rent, we were lucky to pay. Like we were making it paycheck to paycheck. So like, wait, where did you live at the time? Were you still in? Oh, the, Sherman, the Oaks. Sherman, Sherman Oaks. Sherman Oaks. Sherman Oaks. Yeah. So a little bit away. It's not not too far from where we are now. But um, yeah. So like, you know, we were all working for Yada. Uh, what motivated you to move to the West Coast? Like, when did you make the move? Oh, I made the move. Um, it, it was uh, what, what you would call it. It was like. I got an interview for Rick and Morty season three because I almost got a job on that um cool. yeah because i i did some covers for the oni press comic oh yeah because justin because <laughs> justin recommended me and then like because he was and then after that he saw he liked the covers and maybe like a year after that he was like want to try to be on the show and i was like yes <laughs> i was like yes please and even though i knew like it wasn't a guarantee i was like this is i mean i gotta move like <laughs> yeah sure. like i was like i, I gotta move so I did. And, you know, I interviewed, I tried for a couple positions. They liked me, but they went with someone else, which was fine. And because that the person they hired was like, is like crazy talented, but yeah, what you would call it. But I still like, I was confident enough. Like <laughs> I moved with $2,000 and a, and a, a dream in my heart, you know? <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. uh, and like, I just happened, like, it just happened that uh, my roommates, Frosh and Sandra were looking for, they were down with me living with them and you know uh yeah so that's why it happened you guys still live yep together. we still do <laughs> <laughs> they're great i mean i know it's great so you have uh you have no a, it's great i i same group of friends that you live with like that's no it's it's great because that shit in retrospect that shit can go so wrong <laughs> absolutely like we were very lucky that we got along as well as we did especially now it's like 
quarantine strategy. Yeah. yeah. I relate to that so much because I, I don't know if I talked about that during the, in the episode where like I get interviewed, but I, <laughs> when I moved to LA, I basically uh, just went on Facebook and asked, uh, <laughs> hey, everyone, like, I, I'm in Paris right now, but I, I got a gig in LA and I got a visa. Is there anyone looking for a roommate? Right, yeah. And Teresa Potts and Kevin Bailey at the time were like, mm-hmm. Teresa actually made it happen and okay. they looked at houses while I was not in the US because I couldn't <laughs> just come to right. like, so they like found a house and they trusted that I was a person that was not going to murder them. And wow. <laughs> <laughs> It was just like they didn't know me at all. Right. It's like, it's so, yeah, it's so crazy when you think about it, like finding roommates (laughs) and like, yeah, dude, people in LA. That house was, was rad. Yeah. The Spider-Man. Oh, dude. Yeah. yeah. And the Etienne lives there now. He does. Cause you guys work together. Oh, I love Etienne. Yeah. Yeah, Etienne is like a really good (laughs) friend of mine. He's awesome. I was the one who, um, yeah, I was the one when he was making the move to LA, I was like, hey, do you want to kind of like take over my lease? Because <laughs> long story short, I was getting expelled out of the U.S. <laughs> oh, no. I didn't know. Because uh, visa stuff. Oh, but, shit. Um, right. But uh, but he took over like my part, so I didn't have to pay double rent. Yeah. I didn't have to pay can- 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 uh, Canada rent. That's good. Of- LA right <laughs> hey, yeah it's like it, it was a, a fun time <laughs> fun time <laughs> sounds like it sounds fun <laughs> but that's a cool house it is a cool house I yeah really... it's a very cool house yeah there was uh, a lot of cool parties there. but um oh. yeah to to wrap up what I was saying I guess I so yeah so the Rick and Morty thing got me here and then whatchamacallit I happen to know to, to get a test for Steven. I, 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 uh, I know, oh my God, Colin, Colin, who he was like a friend of a friend. We were at a, like a, you know, like a party and he's a super chill dude. And, you know, it came up that I was like looking for work and he was like, Oh dude, I'll get you a test. And I was like, Oh, <laughs> was oh like, cool. Was like, cool. And like, so, and it's funny. I had a, I had a test for Steven and for Victor and Valentino. And I was like, at the time, I was like, oh, there's no way. <laughs> like, I was, I 100% was like, there's no way I'm getting the Steven one, but I might as well try. And uh, lo and behold, <laughs> yeah, that's, that's the one. Yeah, it's, it's really weird. That's why, like, I, I'm a big advocate. And it was for boards, too. It wasn't for, obviously, because it wasn't for design, which I was super not confident in. And, like, it, it just goes to show, just fucking try everything. <laughs> Doesn't, yeah. doesn't that matter? Yeah, like you, just try everything. My first job was was BG layout on the yeah. Loud House, which is like, if you had asked yeah. me a year before that, what do you think your breakout <laughs> job's gonna be? I would have laughed. Yeah, same. I was like, no, <laughs> like that's, that's no way. Because um, yeah. Nicole, would you did you would you say that you tested always for design up until that mostly uh, job? Mostly, yeah. Mm-hmm. The Rick and Morty thing was character design, BG design, and B- color style and BG color. <laughs> I tried for a bunch of things. Do you think you never tested for boards and or visions because you didn't you like you didn't know about the positions or you didn't think you had it in you? Like kind of what was the thought? I always wanted to do it because I'm I'm big into storytelling. I like the that aspect. Like I I'm always very impressed by animation and boards, but it was something that intimidated me. Cause I like, I felt like, like doing comics, you kind of, you kind of get it a little bit, you know, cause you kind of like, they're kind of like adjacently related. Mm-hmm. Right. Like not exact, but yeah. Like, uh, yeah, similar. but I was always too intimidated. <laughs> I think. I see. And I just didn't, I didn't like, cause when you, whenever you enter a position or a thing, it's like, if you're not taught in an official capacity, there's that, there's that, uh, doubt, I guess that I, that I'll be found out that I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> imposter syndrome yeah that never goes yeah, away yeah that never goes away but you know what's it's funny it took having a couple jobs and some unfortunate situation that happened that for me to realize like no you know what you're doing now <laughs> now, now it's just about getting better and that's yeah so it's yeah yeah moving up uh, maybe the ladder or just kind of figuring out like yeah slowly just i'm gonna stick around in boards for a while learn as much as i can you're good at it yay thank you <laughs> uh, what kind of goals do you have in mind for 
your career, just like as far as projects yeah. go? Yeah, uh, I want to have a show one day. That's that's the end goal, I get, or you know, one of the big ones, I suppose. I'm I'm trying yeah. to pitch a lot this year, right? Yeah. Or well, I guess next year because it's near the end of the year, but like this and next year. I, I did my first, had my first like pitch experience, I suppose, in the past few months, yes. Ooh. Um, which was super good. Like it, it was a learning experience for sure. Uh, just learning how, like what it takes and like, you know, the, that it's something that I can do, <laughs> you know, Right. but I'm hoping that, yeah, I'd love to, you know, keep going with boards and, you know, spend the next handful of years just like. <laughs> but yeah, like I, I'd love to, I'm going to keep trying to pitch stuff. You know, I'm going to try to. What kind of, like, what's your, I, I'm not going to say brand because <laughs> that's like a big word, but sure. like, what's your, like, if you ever were to run mm -hmm. a show, like kind of what is the tone or the kind of stuff yeah. that you would be really that's excited to, yeah. to pitch or, or run or totally. yeah, create. Um, yeah, I mean, there's a lot of like tonal stuff that I like. You know, I, you, have, you always have a couple of like ideas in the chamber, right? Like I, mm -hmm. I would love to do something a little more like, I, like I have a, a pitch that I have to develop more that's more FLCL inspired, you know, like just tonally, not much else. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then there's, uh, you know, I love like, I, I want to pitch stuff that can maybe be a musical at the same time kind of because uh taking a cue from my current job uh central park because i mm -hmm. i was trying to learn as much as possible on that job to kind of get an idea for how that can work because you know it's a big ask to get yeah. three three or four songs in an episode you know consistently yeah. and have it work yeah oh yeah and then uh i think i like i tend to like honestly it's anything that's just very character driven and interpersonal and like it can have it can kind of double as like because my favorite thing is surprising people with how complex and deep certain like character relationships can be because like nice that's the, that seems very vague but like you know like taking someone taking characters that are just like goofy and whatever and, and you learn to like them and then suddenly bam you're crying motherfucker <laughs> <laughs> like like i don't know like that, that's the that's the kind of stuff i always liked and like i liked to uh, i always like oh i can't believe it meant venture bros oh yeah oh yeah that's a huge one for me like because they yeah, they were they had a continuity and that's one of those shows that like if in my ideal world i'd have a show with continuity for sure like sure i love building upon uh you know pre-established story and rewarding people for watching a show semi-consistently and like developing characters over time. I don't know. It's a, that it's again, maybe kind of a vague answer, but that's really all I need. And hopefully music is involved, but yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's a, yeah. that's a big, it's just gotta have continuity and musical numbers. Yeah. And yeah. Like <laughs> um, that might, that might have to happen later in my career, but you know. <laughs> yeah, well, whatever. Yeah, I can try. What about genre? Do you have like a favorite genre? Yeah. Of uh, I mean, <laughs> I like, uh, I like horror stuff a lot. Like I like um, when stuff has sort of a horror edge, like Billy and Mandy was always a big thing. And like, and also just like, um, like, like the comic I'm working on, if it's sort of like small town horror cryptid crap, that's always a big, I like that a lot. And then uh, pirates. <laughs> oh yeah. I, like I, I've always, I, I like pirates. I said like, you know, like illustrative golden age treasure planet ass pirates a lot. Yeah. So like, yeah, I, I have I have an idea or two for that that I'm hoping that I thought you went with treasure planet, yeah, not treasure. Yeah, island. man. Because <laughs> it's an animated. Did you mean to say treasure island? No, or did no, you treasure planet. <laughs> okay. I love treasure planet. Interesting choice. Yeah, like it's it's one of those movies that it's not perfect, but I. It, it kind of mixes all of the things I love. I actually I agree. Yeah, I think it's yeah, it's a fun. Yeah, it's in that weird spot where Disney just like wasn't paying attention <laughs> to what they were making. Yeah. And all of a sudden there was like a, these interesting yeah. like art directed movies and like they're not like Atlanta. Yeah. Is one of those yeah, yeah, yeah. It and falls like, in that category. <laughs> yeah, like they're not great. But they're like really yeah. cool just to watch. Yeah, that's a special place in my heart. But yeah, like pirate stuff, small town supernatural stuff and beetlejuice <laughs> <laughs> and be and that's that's how you make a nicole beetlejuice yep, it's me <laughs> venture brothers yeah. and uh pirates 
God, can we talk about Venture Bros? Is so good. Venture Brothers is great, <laughs> and it's uh, a damn shame that yeah. uh, it got canceled. But I hope I that think, it gets some second life somewhere. I think that they'll. Uh, yeah, I, think I mean, they're so. I think there's too much on the table, and like they were, they were finishing it. Like they were on the last season, yeah. and for them to not be allowed to just finish it is just like shitty. Like that would yeah. really suck. No, for sure. That genuinely, like that, yeah. that whole thing was a big factor for me to just like <laughs> feel really bad about continuing to like pitch stuff. Cause it just felt like, <laughs> like, man, if Venture Brothers, this like long lasting legacy show that has all these like fans and all this stuff, like if they could just get canceled at a, at the drop of a hat, it's like, man, what's the, yeah. what's the point, man? But anyway, whatever. That's no, I feel for like, sure. yeah, there's just so much, there's just so many elements Why that you cannot so control in like just, I don't know, like, yeah. who could have ever planned that streaming was going to be a thing, like, yeah. 10 years ago, you know? I like, know. it's such a, yeah, it's a new thing. Yeah. It's a new world. Well, Venture Brothers feels perfect for, for yeah. streaming, and so I, yeah. I hope that they get picked up by HBO Max or something. Me just to let them... too. <laughs> it's just odd. I, I mean, I can imagine what happened behind the scenes. I don't, I don't want to get into it, but I, <laughs> I, uh, yeah. I find it odd. Yeah. But anyway, yeah. well, I think we're nearing the end yeah. here. I was uh, wondering, there's something that we we don't often get to talk about mm -hmm. is mm -hmm. creative block in like in terms of yeah. like, you oh know? yeah, I guess that's the name, huh? <laughs> yeah, I'm like, all the past episodes, we haven't gotten to talk about that. And I feel like <laughs> yeah. we should. And I feel like I just think it's a clever <laughs> name. I, I feel like I feel like the reason why I never bring it up uh, is because I feel like everyone's gonna have the same answer, yeah. but maybe not. So, but I yeah. don't think, I think we might be surprised. And I feel like, okay. uh, Nicole, have you ever like gone through an art rut where oh, yeah. like you like you could like had no inspiration or like you were frustrated with your drawings and like, what was it like? And how did you get out of it? Right. Uh, God, sometimes it feels like every other day. <laughs> <laughs> I definitely feel it you know? lately. Yeah, I mean, when I have a job or a regular project, definitely, I think having a job motivates you a bit because it's like you kind of have to draw a certain thing. Like you don't have to think about what you need to draw. You just have to draw it. <laughs> but Sorry, yeah, but yeah. Um, for just personal stuff, like usually, um, I mean, lately for me, it's just been finding a thing I like a lot and making yeah. a project out of it. Um, I actually haven't like drawn outside of a project very much lately, like our job or a project. I mean... But I will say in general, when having our artist block something I used to do a lot was draw stuff I'm not good at drawing because it kind of resets your brain a little to like right having this little challenge to just draw a thing that you know like because if you're frustrated with how you're drawing you're you you won't be surprised by because if you draw something you like and that you know you can draw and it comes out bad you'll get upset maybe you know right. yeah. but if you draw something you're not good at drawing you're learning something and you already are you're expecting it to come out bad so if it comes out a little better, that's an interesting. then it's like, oh, okay. Yeah. I don't know. That that's hmm. that's been my thought process with that. No, that's a, that's, I've never heard that. So there you go. I was full of shit. <laughs> See? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I, yeah, it's, it's interesting. I don't know if that would work for everyone, but I, I no, I I don't. Yeah, that's just a personal thing. I'm sure it's just for some people, it's like no. I'm not I think it's that. great though that like <laughs> to hear like what you do, and hopefully it inspires other people because yeah, like my <laughs> my thing is always to be like, oh, just do observation drawing just go out there and just sketch like yeah. buildings or people or animals like that's just my thing is like getting out of the art block yeah that too I think drawing from life was one that I did a lot too like I'll just sit somewhere and just draw things that are passing by <laughs> I don't do that as much anymore but I used to well we don't go anywhere so. yeah, that, well, yeah that, that doesn't help <laughs> that makes it a little hard what about you, Jean? Like, what's your yeah. thing when you're like... Oh, boy. When I figure it out... I, <laughs> like, ask, asking me today and, like, this past month yeah. is probably the worst time to ask because I I am so blocked and I have no idea, like, how to get out of it. I, I mean, quarantine has been a, a drag, but yeah. there's other factors that I, I can't talk about. But it's just, like... Yeah, just really feeling, uh, really feeling the burnout and like not knowing how to get out of it. So yeah, you're right. I think that you know, I I changed my mind. I think that is a, a good thing to ask. About. <laughs> I, just, uh, 
I, I just don't know. I don't know what mine is. Usually for me, like I have, um, I've always had these like goals in mind and like sort of what I was working towards mm. and bigger projects. Yeah. Like you were saying, like I, mm. I don't really draw outside of working towards something, something sure. finished. Yeah. Uh, in the middle of quarantine, I got really antsy and I wanted my way of getting around the the block and the burn and you know just in general like the malaise of yes. quarantine was that I wanted to like take something back I wanted to do a project that kind of took me back to why I even yeah. started doing all this stuff and so that's why I started my webcomic Robobo yeah. and I I do want to continue it and I will continue yeah. it but man yeah I think just like it's it's the quarantine and everything it just yeah. like it, it got really hard to, <laughs> to stay creative and productive yeah. day in day out um on top of having a job and not getting any kind of like external I don't know, rejuvenation. You know, it's like I took for granted a little bit, I think, just like how much. I think we all did. But, yeah, yeah. Like how much going outside helped <laughs> clear up that fog, you know, the sort for of sure. the block. For sure. I don't know. When I figure it out, I'll uh, <laughs> come back. We to have it. a whole, you have a whole bunch of podcast episodes to figure I it out. I have a whole yeah. bunch of them. <laughs> Somebody will have the answer. <laughs> but no, I, there's no right, there's no one answer. And so it's just like whatever works for you. And I think my prediction is that a lot of the time it's like, just kind of working through yeah. it, you know, like I, I think there's no, yeah. it's, it's, it's sometimes it's good to take a step back yeah. and like for me, travel is always good. Playing video games. <laughs> Playing video games. No, yeah, I love just taking in other cool stuff. Like that'll always yeah, get me. That going. helps too. I do yeah. feel like, honestly, sometimes there's like a moment that inspire, like for me, like our blog comes from like three different um, mm. sides. It could be either like you're running low on inspiration and at that moment, what you need to do is like what you were saying, like go outside or play video games or watch a bunch of movies or read books to just kind of like fill up that well again. Yeah. Or yeah. then it could be just like you were saying, Nicole, like you're getting frustrated with your drawing, probably because like recently, like the one standards can uh, go up, but like one's draftsmanship is sure. not up to that level yeah, of those yeah. new expectations so that gap is kind of what creates that like like frustration yeah i've seen that before and i agree with that yeah because once you it's sort of like a weird because you learn to see stuff better so yeah your standards go up and then when your stuff doesn't match your standards because it, it's because uh, it's always improving right but even if even if at the time you're frustrated and you're like a soak <laughs> What do we suck now? But like, yeah, no, totally. It's sort of like this weird compounding effect, I guess. Or yeah, I don't know. I don't know how to put it, but yeah. Yeah, it's definitely like, you're like, oh, like, you know, kind of like, I don't know if you guys remember like, uh, or if that happened to you guys as little kids, but like for me, as a little kid, I had like those very vivid images in my brain I was like this is exactly what I want to draw and I put the, yeah. the pencil on the paper and just like a terrible <laughs> drawing comes out oh and God, then I would yeah. get so mad oh I, would, I would actually like cry Me too. I'm, like, <laughs> I'm, I'm terrible <laughs> oh yeah buddy I, yeah <laughs> yeah yeah that happens to me yep <laughs> Somehow that was easier to deal with as a kid because I think like... Yeah, maybe the stakes are lower. The <laughs> stakes are lower. Well, I think, and this is getting deep, but like, I think um, to some degree it's because you still have, you know you have this whole life ahead of you to like work on that. Yeah. And so you, you trust that you'll figure it out, but then the older you get and you're still the same, yeah. you feel like you still haven't improved. It's like, oh no. You're like, uh-oh. <laughs> but I think that that's like, a big part of that is just, uh, yeah. it's, it's never going to be, you're never going to be as good as you want to be. And so so it's like a never ending Story. thing. Like, it yeah, well, that, that's so funny because for me, like with drawing recently, I'm like, I know my limitations in drawing and I'm like, all right, like <laughs> I know what I can draw. I know what I can't draw or render, but sure. I'm like fine with it. Sure. However, whenever yeah, yeah. it comes to story, that's where I'm like, oh no, the story yeah. has to be perfect. It has to reflect yeah. society and <laughs> all the facets of the soul. And <laughs> yeah, 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 I feel that. I agree, yeah. No, I've, been, yeah. I've been struggling with that too. <laughs> it's like, I think, I think part of that too is it's like, I don't know how to reflect society in a way that society. isn't obnoxious and on the nose. Yeah. Like, yeah. It's like, every, oh, yeah. Everything's so batshit and yeah. everyone's been kind of doing everything. And so I'm like, what do I have left to say? Like, I, I know. I feel like to say. I feel yeah. that like in my bones. I feel like what's <laughs> kind of helped me recently is like reading essays. Mm. But at the same time, I'm like, like, you know, there's like this feeling of like, 
oh, am I ever going to be good enough to have an opinion that's worthwhile? Or like, oh, yeah. should I just like parrot what I just read, but like put it in a context of like a script? And then it's like, like, you know, I don't know, yeah. like uh, my experience is only so much, yeah. you know? Like, sure, sure, sure. Sometimes though, I feel like it's really funny because I, I don't really go on Reddit a lot, but like <laughs> uh-huh. my boyfriend spends a lot of time on Reddit and <laughs> he finds these stories that are insane i'm like oh like i get to learn about so many people's experiences through this <laughs> website like things i could never have imagined that are sure i think true because you know it's so crazy that like i feel like oh i don't think they made that up like, <laughs> you know, they, did, they should be writing on the tv show yeah <laughs> yeah right stranger than fiction mm. right yeah 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 no that's a good point there's a lot to mine yeah. out there in the world plus i think i don't think that uh well this is going back to i guess the creative block stuff but like i i'm trying to yeah. trying to remind myself and come to terms with the fact that like just making stuff for fun without like big social commentary is okay and is maybe yeah. even oh yeah encouraged Especially right now <laughs> yeah people want it people want escapism yeah, and just yeah. to like have something fun and so having this big sweeping like yeah it's about how life is. it's like it's probably not. you ever think about society you ever think about society? You ever think about like we live in one? That's crazy. It's exhausting. <laughs> well, what was it? There's a uh, uh, the time of recording. They've like announced a trailer for a Michael Bay produced movie that's about quarantine, and it's like it's like fuck uh, off, guys. We're living it. Yeah, thanks, dude. I really want to watch a movie about it when I'm living Michael it. Day. Honestly. I'm I'm like really surprised at how much pandemic uh living in the pandemic content there already is and I'm just like yeah I don't know I I for me it feels tone deaf like just kind of like, like why why would you make that like we're living in it but it's it's executives being like oh this is probably irrelevant <laughs> yes <laughs> <laughs> However, though, maybe people, I don't know, maybe people need to, maybe people need to relate mm-hmm. through content. I don't know. Like, it's like it's not my perspective, but maybe some people will, <laughs> re- like, I don't know, relate, like, just, like, watch it and feel like, oh, they, I feel, like, heard and seen. I don't know. I, 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 I'd, be cu- I'd be curious to see, like, ratings and responses, but, like, yeah. Yeah. there's a lot of stuff that I've seen pop up on, mm-hmm. like, the Netflixes and whatever that is, like, this is shot, like, yeah. Yeah. during quarantine and it's like these people store and it's like yes. i don't know nobody talks about those i haven't seen anybody talk about any of those shows so it's like yeah i haven't either i always find out about it and then nothing however else. guys yeah. like i have to tell you i did watch tiny creatures on netflix it's been shot during quarantine what is that? because yeah. it's like they, like they only have like a couple like animal tamers like it's <laughs> and like go like film everything on a green screen and then it's all like cgi and it's insane the first episode <laughs> is insane i like because it's shot like a nature doc okay. so at first you're like watching it and you're like wow how do they get these shots like how are <laughs> they filming this little gerbil inside of its own burrow you know and you're like right yeah uh, and then you keep watching and then it's like the script is insane it's like a disney movie but in like uh-huh. a first episode and it's like his mom dies and then he uh-huh. goes on this adventure and <laughs> finds himself and then it's uh-huh. it's so crazy and there's like it's just like because i think i don't know i guess there's like this element of surprise that like when you first you watch it you're just like browsing through netflix and you're like yeah whatever tiny creatures i don't know i'm <laughs> high this feels fine <laughs> i like creatures i like when they're tiny and you like put it on i love tiny creatures <laughs> and there's like a like the narrator's voice is like an actual real document doc- documentary so you're like it's not david Attenborough, is it I, you know, I think like, yeah. I doubt it. Does he sound like this? <laughs> is this? Is this David Attenborough doing a nature documentary? He's like too, I, I doubt it. He's too serious. <laughs> like, no. Yeah, I feel like this one is a little bit okay. more just like, it's just like, it's like a dead fan, dead okay. fan kind of voice, but okay. it's like, I, it's, it's like specific. I think they just got gotcha. like whoever, but it's like, so for this whole like 10 minutes, you're like, is this real or is this fiction? <laughs> Is this the real life? A, and I don't this know. This is fantasy. Yeah, it's it's a crazy show. Like only the first episode is is really fun. The other ones are. Kinda... I hadn't even heard of that. It's like yeah, it's one of those like shot in quarantine shows. Well, I do think there's something to people needing to get creative, and like that's to me that's not what I had in mind. Like that sounds like an interesting yeah uh way to get around the limitation. Right. The, yeah. The, thing, the things that I think are lame and annoying is when it's like 
people in their house and they're like talking to each other. It's just like, ah, yeah, on Zoom. Yeah, on Zoom. Oh God, the Zoom. it's like, <laughs> hey, fuck off with that. Like, I don't want to see that. Have we had a Zoom horror movie yet? Uh, well, there was one before the, in the before times. Oh no, the Unfriended, yeah. that. Yeah, was. no, no, well, yeah, Unfriended. Uh, there's a good one with uh, John Cho called Searching, I think. I think it's- Oh, interesting, okay. I love those as schlock. But that one is, it's a, like a thriller mystery. Is that one actually good? Yeah, it's. I think it's good. Oh, it's, yeah. uh, it's told entirely okay. through a computer screen and it, he's like searching for his daughter. Oh, oh that's cool. Yeah, it was neat. I really like it. Cool, that. I never heard of that. I only watched on Frenna. That's why my my reference for for those is schlock, but I love it. <laughs> yeah. yeah, on Frenna is is a fun schlocky yeah. one. Um, well, I think it's about that yeah. time. Um, yeah. Is there anything else you wanted to talk about? Oh. Or anything you want to plug, like maybe your other your oh, podcast. Oh yeah, that's right. Or, yeah, I do yeah. a podcast with my friends, my friends Andre and Brandon, and mm-hmm. uh, it's called The Less You Know it's uh it's just like we call it a comedy news podcast but really we just talk about whatever bullshit and (laughs) then goof off whatever uh we do it live now on uh on twitch oh cool yeah yeah it's it's, uh it's fun that way but yeah that's what i do and then uh i'm doing i'm making another animatic for beetlejuice right now i update it on my twitter all the time and i do like twitch streams for that as well yeah it's looking really thanks yeah i'm i'm it's been fun i've I've developed a a little a little uh following of people that are invested in it (laughs) very very (laughs) yeah it's it's been fun i have emotes now Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> you <Whoa. know>. Wow. <laughs> and people subscribe to me. It's crazy. That's great. <laughs> You're going to be an influencer. Are you going to be a Twitch streamer? Oh, my goodness. <laughs> uh, cool. I'm, yeah, I can't wait to see yeah. that. Oh, and watch Central Park. That's it. <laughs> watch Central Park. It's hard. It's on yeah. Apple TV+. Plus. I don't know. But you get a year of it free if you have an iPhone, pretty much. So. I hope you're getting paid. Well, I guess you are getting yeah, paid. Yeah, I am getting paid. <laughs> For that plug. <laughs> Technically, you yeah. are. That's it. Cool. Yeah. What's your uh, handle? It's uh, here. I'll write it. It's at Ooh, that's good. Schnickles on pretty much everything. I really like this guy over here. He's a. I'm a fan of. Uh, yeah, he's good. Stuff. He's good. I like. I like this. Like all the demons. Blue furry friend. Like all the demons. demons. <laughs> cool. Well, thanks for joining us, no Nicole. No crap. Yeah, that was so fun. <laughs> I I loved hearing about like your whole like. You going to school, you looking for a job, <laughs> like meeting all these yeah. people, like the way you um, tackle art yeah. block and yeah. musical. And musical. And musical. <laughs> and Beatles. And uh, <laughs> um, Yeah, I mean, oh, I guess my parting words would be also for anyone, make friends that like what you like and do want to do what you yeah. do. It's important. That's good. Yeah. Nice. That's actually so true. I'd be nowhere so without my friends. I'd love to say. Yeah. No, it, it's, that's I'm true. like a fucking protagonist. <laughs> you're, you're like, a, yeah, like Luffy. I think we've brought up One Piece in every Yeah, episode. I'm surprised. Oh, yeah, I guess One Piece. <laughs> one Piece was a big yeah, one for was... a while for me. Uh, but yeah. Cool. Yeah. All right. Thanks for listening, everyone. Yeah. Thanks, Nicole. Oh, and hit that subscribe <laughs> hit button. Hit that subscribe Ring button. Ring the bell. <laughs> What's up, YouTube? <laughs> Ring the bell. Bye, everyone. Bye. Thanks for tuning Please. in. Bye-bye. See you. <laughs>